Hi everyone and welcome to this next video in the Simplify OpenTX series and today we're going to be looking at an introduction to OpenTX Companion. Right so the first question to answer is what is OpenTX Companion and you know to be honest the name says it all it's it's a companion piece of software to your OpenTX transmitter so it allows you to edit models, uh, back up your radio, restore stuff, update the firmware um it's yeah just a general um sidekick to OpenTX on your transmitter it can run on windows linux and os x um so let's get started and show you where to download it so where you need to go is open-tx.org and what you do is you go to um, actually on the first page under news we'll probably have the latest version or you could go to downloads and what you want is the latest release version. So 2.3.7 is the latest release. They'll probably be 2.3.8 quite soon to include the new Radio Master um, transmitter. But for the moment, it's 2.3.7. So you click on that, which will take you to all the release notes for um, the page. So you have the SD card contents for the firmware on your transmitter. And then these links down here our OpenTX companion. So you just select the version for your operating system and install it on your computer. I won't go through that step because most people know how to do that already. Right, so what I'm going to do now is open up companion. And this is what you get when you first um, open it up. So the first thing you probably want to do is click on settings. Now I believe you can pull these off of your transmitter. So if you plug it in with USB, you can actually read the settings and the models from the radio. Um, but I'm gonna just briefly go over. So you can give your transmitter a name, say what type it is. So as you can see, these are all the different types of transmitters supported at the moment. As I say, the Radio Master uh, TX16S will be in the next version too. So what you can do is choose your language, the transmitter type, and this is where you set up the options for what you want on your OpenTX module or uh, transmitter. So a lot of this stuff you don't need to worry about. Um, so square font is an option. I find it e a bit easier to read, so I have that checked. No heli. If you don't fly helis, tick this box and you won't get the heli in the wizard. So other than that, no GVARs. Make sure that this isn't ticked because global variables are quite useful for uh, programming your transmitter. If you're in the EU and you don't use flex, you can tick this box. In reality, all it does is hide the D8 option for binding. Uh, so that's all that really does. It's, it doesn't change the actual transmission um, of, of your transmitter. What, what you have in your transmitter is the actual XJT module, which sends the radio frequencies. And that has its own firmware as well so your xjt module can be eu so it will do listen before talk and all that stuff it doesn't relate to, to this at all it this all this does is hide d8 in the menu um you can tick that to enable lua scripts i believe with this version and for quite a while now the compiled lua scripts are built in anyway so that may may or may not be needed um and then for if you want to use flex on your r9 system tick this box uh you can upload um a, a splash screen for when you first switch the transmitter on i'll be showing how to do that in a later video um and also you can if you link to where your sd card data is it helps when you're programming you get all the stuff like the system sounds and all that uh, you can select a backup location, so it will automatically back up the radio um, when you update the firmware. You can choose your stick mode and the default channel order. So that's the basics. You've got a few application settings. Um, again, I won't really go through this. The only thing you'll notice that um, 
is is useful is if you want to install a non-stable release for some reason in the future um you can put that to for release candidates for, but for most cases you're going to want to keep this on stable the other thing i've changed this to just open a model editor um, just because of the way I like to work. You can use a wizard to set up new models in Companion. So just check. I think that's the default anyway. Um, and simulator settings. I've not really dived into this. It works fine as it is. I think, you, yeah, you can choose a, ch a folder where your screenshot goes to, that sort of thing. But you, you don't really need to worry about that. It's fine. For the next part of this tutorial, what I'll do is plug in my transmitter and then I can show you how to do things like grab the models off, do a backup um, and that sort of thing. So what we'll do now is head over to the desk and I'll show you how to plug the transmitter in. All right, so here we have our transmitter. It's going to be slightly different for the newer radios, but only really in the connection you use. In these older things for some reason they put a mini usb on which even probably then was outdated it should have been a micro you find the more modern stuff like i think it's the version 2 of the jumper t16 and the radio master have got nice usb c plugs but all you need to do with later versions of OpenTX, you just switch the radio on and then plug in the usb cable and it will give you the option on screen to use it as a joystick or storage. So you choose storage and that will just hook it up to the PC. So my Tyrannus is just connected. So if um, we head over to the desk, So we have the Tyrannus folder here, which is the actual radio itself. You don't change anything in here, but what you also have is a USB drive. And that's the SD card on the Tyrannus. And that's where we'll be changing stuff eventually. But yet this, this one here, if you change stuff in here, you could potentially brick the radio. So it's this USB drive that we want. So that's, that's it connected. If you have an older version of OpenTX and you can't connect just by plugging it in, what you need to do, we'll switch off and unplug. Is if you hold down or hold the two trim tabs in towards the center and then switch it on, you get to this menu. And then if you plug the USB in, it will say USB connected and that will do the same thing. So that's how you connect the, tr the uh, transmitter. So what we'll do is we'll head back over to, um, back over to the, the screen and then we'll continue with the tutorial. All right, so back at the desk, the Tyrannus is still connected. So what we could do now, if we wanted to, is make a backup of a radio. It's well worth doing this every so often, especially before you do an update. All you do is click on it, choose a folder. So stick on desktop for a minute, uh, maybe give it a date. And the, so today is the 14th of May. So just give it a name. It will read everything from the radio. So your models will be safe, your settings, the firmware even is all in that file. So that's how you do a backup. You can actually back up the firmware separately from the radio with that switch. And what the more interesting thing we can do is read the models from the radio. So if I click this button, it will read all my models from the, the transmitter and put them on here. So now what we could do is edit them um, in Companion, which is a lot easier. So if I open up the Simplify model, which is what we've been working on for the first uh, the first tutorials, 
it will put all the settings up. And it's, as you can see, it's very, very similar to what's on the actual transmitter itself. So what we can do is we have timer one, which is our flight timer. We can label that flight in here. It's so much easier with a keyboard. It'd be even easier if I could spell. But you can set everything up in here. So for example, when we did the inputs, we just used AETR. It's, it's just so much easier to change it with a keyboard. So this, this is why a lot of the times I'll do a, a lot in companion. Sorry, I'm getting a bit OCD here, but yeah, so I'll do, I'll do a lot uh, on companion and in the field, I can just use it to update stuff if I need to, because as you see, it's so much simpler to do it with a keyboard. And then you could also, um, say, set up the output names here so it's easier to understand on the outputs or the channel display screen so but yes it's as simple as that so now we've made changes to um to our transmitters uh or our model uh that makes it simpler to use and it's it's quicker and easier same with logical switches uh, special functions you can do all that in here the only uh, downside is potentially if you're doing special functions and you haven't got the sound files on your uh, pc they're just on your transmitter but again that sd card that you set up in the beginning you could put all that on there so and it should play it back if you've got it so yeah that one it can't find the other thing that you can do is actually simulate the transmitter so if I click that button, what we'll see has popped up on my other, other monitor. But you you have this this window here, which is a simulation of your transmitter. So, and then this is here's your outputs. These are your global variables, which unfortunately looks like they still don't name them here. That would be better. So if you remember, we have our disarm switch. So disarms, you can actually see what's happening here. So at the moment it's in the disarm position. So the special function always sets that to zero because it's disarmed. If I go up here and try and arm it, it puts it to minus one because, and you can may hear the beep going off. And you can actually see the logical switch is working. So if I disarm it, put it all the way to the bottom you can see it goes to zero again and then it goes to one finally and it's armed so you you can actually learn a lot um through using the simulator in here it's it's quite handy because it also lets you um code radios that you don't have um actually have so in the settings so i'm just going to Double check. So if I go in flight modes, yes, yeah, it's, it's got the it's got the names in here, but it just doesn't put them in the simulator. And what we can then do is because we've made a change, we can click this button here to write the models over to the radio. So now on the transmitter, it's going to have those aileron throttle names that we've done. The other thing that it that it will do for you is update your transmitter to the latest version of OpenTX. It's the only real way you can do it. I think you can do it with um, downloading a file, putting it on your SD card and all that, but it's it's just easier with this. But I'm going to save that for another video because there are a few gotchas. This is really just a basic introduction to uh, the software. So what I'm going to do is leave it here because um, I've shown the very basics, like how the most important things is how to edit the model and how to do the backups. And the restore is just the opposite of uh, the backup. So you just choose right back up to radio, load your backup file, which is going to be that one. So you'd open that, load it, and then write to your transmitter. So 
at this point you you will always have a safe copy of your transmitter you know how to edit models so i think that's a good place to leave it at the moment what i will be doing in the future i'll do a video specifically for doing an, an update of OpenTX because there are a few subtle differences for different models there's also on the transmitter itself there is the OpenTX that you run but there's also a bootloader and you it's you don't have to update the bootloader but it's nice to keep it in on the same version so I'll go through all that too I'll also have a video for um as you saw, there, there was the startup screen logo, which is the wrong size now because I've got it as an X light. So, yeah, there's a splash screen. It's it's a simple thing to do, but I'll show it in another video. And when I do that, I'll also also show how to do the little images on the transmitter screen. So if I if I go over to my transmitter, I'll disconnect, and I'll restart it. So there you can see the um, splash screen. And if I just ignore that lot. So you can see this iNav, that's, an, that's a model image. And if I go through and choose a different model, well, you can see them on this side, actually. So there's a mini drag. And just different models all have different images. And I'll show how to do those in, in the same video as the splash screen, which I'll do quite, quite shortly. It's an easy enough thing to do. So... Hopefully that's enough information to get you started on Companion. Um, if you have any anything else you'd like to know, leave a message in the comments and I'll, I'll get something sorted out for that. If you found the video useful, a thumbs up would be great. If it was a bit crap, thumbs down is fine. Um, I'm still learning all this stuff. Um, if you are interested in the next videos, please, please, please subscribe. It's... Uh, I say it every every video now, but it's every subscription is a great help to a small little channel like mine. Um, and yes, the bell icon to be reminded when a new video comes out. But until then, have a great time, guys. We can actually get out and fly again now, so please enjoy it, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.